Mantua is an ancient city in northern Italy that was founded as early as 2000 BC. First the land of the Etruscans, then a stronghold of the ancient Romans. Sites, Palazzo d'Acol, Castello di San Giorgio, Cathedral of San Pietro, Palazzo Acerbi, Church of St. Lawrence. Other Italy. Mantua. In the once glorious Italian city of Mantua, where stores have never heard of tax-free, and where the deserted night is so deserted that it seems possible to accidentally meet Rigoletto in an alley. Yes, this is his hometown, Mantua. Once glorious in its prosperity, now abandoned by most travelers, it is atmospherically beautiful. Only Italian speech is heard on the streets, there are no dark-skinned visitors selling flowers and branded bags, which, in general, for modern Italy already seems to be a landmark. The city is absolutely striking on the way up, if you arrive by the old way. Surrounded by three lakes, the fourth has dried up, the town seems like an island. It's worth driving along this road for the view alone, the locals call it skyline in English. And there will be no photo here, it is impossible to capture it properly, let it be a beautiful surprise. I will only say one thing, the impression is comparable to the French city of Saint Michel. What to do, enjoy the atmospheric streets in the city center. Look at the half-faded frescoes on the walls of the houses, they are everywhere. Go to cafes, here you can enjoy aromatic Italian coffee, for one euro, drink Bella Vista and Franca Corta, when prose echo is already boring. Visit Cafe Venezia. But about food, separately. Later. I will tell you about two sites that struck me first of all. Ducal Castle, Palazzo Ducale, and Palazzo Te, Palazzo Te. First of all, the Ducal Castle is on the main square. The structure is grand and imposing, with a spacious courtyard and moss-covered walls. The long absence of restoration does not harm the view, on the contrary, the historical spirit is felt even more clearly. By whom, when, why the palace was built and how many rooms it has, you will find in the guidebook. Probably. If you find a guidebook. I'll tell you something else, the castle keeps the atmosphere of the Middle Ages and as if it transports you back hundreds of years. I didn't feel the heating, so it's better to dress warmer when going there. Tuckle Castle. The ticket gives the right to visit two parts, the first, the famous room with frescoes, the second, the actual castle. The famous frescoed room. Describes the story of the Duke of Mantua receiving the news of his son's appointment as Pope. The Pope of Rome. It's a historic, proudly honorable event, so respect the locals with a visit. You've seen it, you've gone down to the exit and you're about to leave, but you'll be late. Look around, find the sign in the courtyard, there is only one, Sita ideally. Under the sign is the door we need, go ahead. The ideal city exhibition is a must-see. Seemingly unremarkable at first glance, with a subtle Italian sense of beauty, it reveals the idea of ideality. Layouts, sketches, and books from the Renaissance era begin the exposition, while it ends with visions of the city of a super-technological Earth and newly developed planets. Interestingly, from the first exhibits, this is the essence of the idea of the future, in its dynamics over several centuries. The ideal idea of the perfect city, how it originated, developed, and what it represents in the eyes of our contemporaries. To the rich historical heritage Italians do not stop adding new, alive, progressive. Development does not stop, inspiration does not stop. Recommended. The main part of the castle palace, incredible halls, built as if, whether in fact, in chronological order. At the entrance are stylized frescoes quotes on the walls along the stairs and corridor. These are impressions of famous people about the palace, peculiar assessments, and comments. We pass into the spacious halls, majestic and cold, large scale. I was struck by a painting by Rubens, which is a prototype, most likely, of his famous work, which I had seen two weeks before at a special pompous exhibition in the Vienna Museum of Art History. 
Here, simply, and naturally, I find the same characters, the same master hand, but in its place. Quiet, calm and not very conspicuous, as it has gone on for centuries and as it should be. Rubens. I will stop at the room of Troy, it is a must visit, to look into the details of the murals and try to feel the message coming from these frescoes. Remembering the legendary history would also be good for understanding. Further, to enjoy. Halls. Otherwise, incredible painting of ceilings and galleries, the skill of artists, deceiving your eye with unexpected solutions. So I couldn't resist touching a wall that seemed to be marble. But no, plaster and painting, unbelievable. After the medieval part, you suddenly find yourself in an enfilade of 18th and 19th century rooms, and it's an intriguing twist. The ceilings never fail to mesmerize, the transitions are interspersed with a play of mirrors, and tapestries galore wrap each room, the real thing. Not a reconstruction. The spirit is breathtaking, the immersion complete. Add to this the almost complete absence of tourists, this is in Italy. The affect is assured. City. You will not find in Mantua pomp and shouting advertisements of attractions or establishments. But gems are discovered one after another. For example, in one of the squares you see a church. Medieval, in addition, covered galleries, something reminiscent of Russian living rooms. It's big. From the story of a local resident. This church was discovered in the 20th century, until then the square was intensively, densely built up with houses, so that the church building was inside, in the courtyard, it was used as a warehouse so long ago that no one even remembered the original purpose of these walls. When they decided to clear the square, to reconstruct the old houses, they accidentally found the church. Below is a photo, to understand the size. In Mantua the main thing is not the sites. The most interesting thing is the people. Passionate, alive, real. Gesticulating, penetrating, contact. I was lucky enough to meet native Mantuans, make friends with them, go to a family home-cooked dinner with local, exclusively, cuisine and touch the colorful everyday life of the locals. I was struck by the style and taste, in the food, in the decoration of the apartments, bookcases and interiors. Elegant, yet simple combinations, this is Italy as it is. This spilled over into a local's tour of Palazzo del Te, I'm moving on. Palazzo del Te is an amazing place, not only for its architectural appearance and skillfulness of finishing, but also for the history and idea of its origin. Once upon a time, in the early 16th century, Mantua was ruled by the Marquises of Gonzaga. One of the representatives of this family, the most interesting to us, Federico Gonzaga, decided to build himself a palace. And not just for fun, but for the enjoyment of the eyes and body. Our hero had an overbearing, proud mother. And a beautiful mistress. The mistress, as usual, the mother did not approve and tried to reason her son out, to get rid of the maiden. But the son did not want to get rid of the lady of his heart, and could not get rid of his mother. Therefore, he chose an island surrounded by the same four Mantui lakes and decided to build a villa there. A villa in the style of the Roman great countryside, stylized as rustica, rustic style, in Roman. So that it would remind him of his childhood years spent in Rome, and of the majestic buildings of the ancients. For this work was invited Raphael's teacher, Giulio Romano, to realize all the dreams of the Duke, pardon me, then still a marquis, about the duchy, aesthetics and love, in life. The palace was built and finished in 10 years, 1525 to 1535. The idea was this, surrounded by water on all sides, the palace was connected to the land with only one road, and the crossing required a special permit. Even for mom. Or specifically for mom. Since, most of the palace was reserved for the beautiful beloved. From the female part, one begins to see the palace and the first room is dedicated to Ovid's metamorphoses. Interestingly, with such lofty associations, oh, 
Abid, the first thing that strikes one is the incredible eroticism of the frescoes. Lively and true, they catch the eye and are utterly mesmerizing. I highly recommend stopping and gazing, although the unsophisticated viewer's first inclination is to shamefully look away. The personality of the Marquis Duke literally permeates every object and corner. It is worth paying attention to the details, on the mantelpiece or in the corner of the ceiling, one can accidentally see a lizard, which the Duke chose as his symbol, and not accidentally. Meaningfulness is everywhere here, reflecting truth and beauty, true beauty, beautiful truth, even if it is not what it seems. Returning to the lizard, the Marquis of Gonzaga was an extremely ardent man, in mock reproach or showing feigned eagerness to temper his passions, chose as his personal emblem cold-blooded and emotionless, according to the ideas of the time, reptile. The lizard has many meanings, and it watches over you, in each of the rooms. The second room that blew me away, literally, was the room of Cupid and Psyche. Incredible sensuality, poignancy, and depth, hard to find the words, really, surround you on all sides. Here are scenes from the myth in which the beautiful maiden was disliked by Venus for her beauty. And also for distracting her favorite son. Here are scenes of the suffering and misery that her overbearing, formidable mother sent her as punishment. And Cupid's desire to unite with the beautiful nymph. And scenes praising love and beauty in every essence and manifestation. I see, don't you? Mama Gonzaga, if she was allowed into this part of the palace, was biting her elbows, for sure. Subtle. Cupid and Psyche. Next we move on to the male part, the master's room. The first room is a spacious hall, with images of horses along the perimeter of the hall. And these are not just abstract horses, they are portraits of the Marquis's horses, his favorite racers. They are executed so skillfully, as if live photos, and with 3D effect. There is much to admire in the master's chambers, many symbolic moments, hints of gods and signs of greatness. Whether it's an eagle at the headboard of the bed or a fortune telling by birth month in the zodiac room. Pay close attention. Horse. The last part, interesting not only aesthetically but also symbolically, is one of the main reasons for building the whole structure. Back to the story, the Marquis of Gonzaga, who very much wanted to become a duke, with all the benefits and power implications of the title, invited the Emperor Charles V to visit him. For a day. He had been preparing for this for several years, having specially arranged an enfilade of five rooms for the meeting of the high guest. Instead of nymphs, horses, and pleasures, there's a coldly majestic glorification of Roman legionaries. The triumph of Rome, the greatness of warriors. Not only is the ornamentation beautiful, but it is placed in such a way that it has no beginning and no end, the procession is closed in an endless continuation of the movement towards glory and power. The following rooms continue this idea and reveal it, continuing to flatter the emperor, according to the idea, as they go along. The apotheosis is the last room, the hall of giants. The central theme of the image, the overthrow of the titans by Zeus, and in perspective, vertical, please note, above the head of the thunderer, we see a throne and an eagle. Symbols of the Roman Empire. Think of this elegant, powerful flattery. Thus the cunning Marquis of Gonzaga became the Duke of Gonzaga. With possession of Mantua. And the Emperor stayed another week. The ceiling of the Hall of Giants. Before leaving the palace, find the secret garden. The mosaics, frescoes, and secret grotto have not been restored since it was built. Opposite the grotto is a small courtyard, on the perimeter of the courtyard, look, Aesop's fables, we can easily recognize Krulov's fables in them, the frescoes opposite, the circle of life, cyclical, of course, and uninterrupted. Take a closer look. I was lucky to hear all this, I saw a lot of it myself, but still, from an incredible person, once the Italian cultural attaché at the embassy of Yugoslavia. Separately, I would like to mention the very apt title of our impromptu tour, for it felt just like this, 
refresh your sexual instinct. For this is life, essence, beauty, and truth. On the way out, Grandpa winks, slyly and playfully. You're in Italy. After that, you want to say, in vino veritas. You should have a drink. Especially if you, like me, are traveling without a date. Let's go see the bars of Mantua. I'll point out a couple, first of all, Chase -E -C -E. In the heart of the old town, crowded, noisy, soulful, fun. You have to watch people there, meet people, talk, collect stories. With drinks it's simple, very simple, drink local wine, that's it. The second is Sketch Bar, the owner is a sommelier, passionate. Will listen to requests, recommend, and even substitute wine if you don't like it. To drink, as I mentioned above, sparkling Bella Vista and Franciacarta are the classics. Out of the unusual, ask for a sparkling to the host's taste. Specific, very interesting, unfiltered, untreated biologically natural sparkling wine, I have not experienced such a thing. Even if you don't like it, it will definitely wet your receptors. My leader is a quiet white donkey wine, the author's fiction, but you will understand, the donkey on the label. The label is also not for nothing, the winery and vineyard still use donkeys to transport the harvested grapes, peculiarities of the terrain, and there is nothing to replace the pack horses. The official name, according to the grape variety, is Caracalassino. Of the reds, Amarone is definitely the best. Don't forget to eat. Absolutely, definitely try the local cuisine. In Mantua there are a lot of Mantuan specialties, for me it is still surprising, I have not seen such in Russia, and in other European cities I have not met such abundance and variety of this particular underscore this underscore city underscore dishes. The main and most famous, tort Eli de Zucca, it is pasta, well, almost, horse meat, it began to be actively used in food after the Napoleonic Wars, when in the neighboring battles killed everything. Well, you know, had to use horses, and so they got used to it. Cakes, soft Helvetia and biscuit likes Brisolona, don't wait for a fork, they eat with their hands. After satiating your spirit and stomach, take a stroll through the night alleys, no crime spotted. Feel the city of beautiful dukes and true Italians who love life. We did it by singing the Duke of Mantua's song from Verdi's Rigoletto, The Heart of Beauties, especially spectacularly you can do it in the main square, standing with your back to the Ducal Palace, looking at Casa di Rigoletto, there is a sign, you won't get lost. And I will finish by humming the words from the same song, but it is impossible not to fall in love, long.